Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. Watercolour invitations are all the rage at the moment and I'm going to show you how to professionally make a high quality wedding invitation using Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to make this part of our Abella invitation. Our Abella invitation actually is backed onto craft cardstock and has a jute tie and also a love heart tag but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to show you how to do the digital component. The first thing we want to do is set up our artboard. So we come up to file and new and the size of the invitation is going to be 5 by 7 so we'll just pop that in here and we need to have a bleed. It's usually 3 millimeters or that in inches. Make sure your colour mode is CMYK and 300 ppi. The orientation is portrait, everything else looks OK. I'm going to click OK. So that is our 5x7 invitation and it also has a bleed which is the red area. The next thing we want to work on is our text. So we go to the type tool over here, click on it and then click on the artboard. We can then just start to type our text as normal. To save time I've gone ahead and typed out the body part of the invitation and the font I've used is Times New Roman point size 8 for this text and the date is also Times New Roman and 20 point. We are now going to work on our feature text which is the bride and the groom's names and I'm going to come back to the type tool, click on that, click back on the artboard and type in Abella. I'm then going to select it and come up to my character and type in the font and this particular font is called Malika Script. I'll leave a link in the description as to where you can purchase this font. I'm going to then make the size 80. So you'll notice that this typeset has glyphs. And the glyph is a beautiful swash in the A. So we can keep that if we want that as the style, but for this invitation I'm going to remove it. So what we need to do is go to our glyph panel, which is the A over here. Or if you don't have that already up, you can go to Type and Glyphs. We then go up to Show and click the drop down box. Select Alternatives for Current Selection. And then we need to select the A. And it will show us a whole heap of options we can use for the A. And today I'm going to use this one. Now we're going to do the groom's name, so we just click somewhere else on the artboard and type in Martin, or whatever the groom's name is. Again, there's a glyph and it's on the end, so I'm just going to select that, go down to my glass panel and choose a different N. I'll go with this one. Perfect. And once more for the ampersand. Now we just need to move the type around until we get the spacing correct. Now I want to center everything together. So I'm going to select everything on the artboard and I'm going to come back up to align and align objects and horizontally align center. So now all this text in the box is all perfectly centered. I want to make sure that it's also centered to the artboard. So I'm going to come down here and click on artboard tool and also then go up to view and rulers show rulers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag across a line to make sure it goes in the center of my artboard. So to do that you come over to the grid on the left hand side 
and you hold down the left key button and you drag and drop a line straight into the middle and you can see it there as it's light blue I'm going to click away and that's the center of my artboard so again I'm going to select all my text and I'm going to come up here to the selection tool and I'm going to click on that and it puts a grid around here so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that blue line up the guide with this box here now I know that my text is perfectly centered to the width of my artboard I will then move my names a little bit lower and the body text a little bit higher to make room for the flowers that I'm going to put on the corners we can move all this later and we probably will need to depending on how big the flowers are and whereabouts we'd like to put them so now that my text is done and I'm going to work on the flower I'm going to come up to file save as and save it as watercolor invitation and okay I'm saving it as an AI file so I can come back to it later and put in my watercolor image so the next thing are the flowers I'm going to go to file and new and click on any size board you like and then go to file place and choose your graphic and place I'll leave a link in the description to the graphic set you don't have to use this you could use any graphic you like but just make sure that it's minimum of 2000 pixels the background is transparent and it's high quality I can tell that this artwork is quite high quality and I know that I could put it into an invitation and print it and it would still look high quality but I would like to actually make this image into a vector so I get extra high quality and won't have any rasterizing um, at all so to do that I'm going to come up to image trace click on the down arrow and then click on high fidelity photo this will take a few moments to do its thing now that that is finished I'm going to come back up here and click on expand and that's perfect it's made my graphic a vector I'm going to remove the white background we now have by simply clicking and pressing delete on the keyboard okay so I'm quite happy with that and if I zoom in you'll see that all the watercolor now are individual shapes so I can scale this to any size I like and I know that it's going to be high resolution every single time rubber band select everything go back up to file click open and open the invitation you saved before so now we've got the text component and I am going to paste the watercolor flower component by clicking command V or control V on a PC and there it is there so to scale the image and place it in the corners I'm going to come up to this arrow the selection tool click on that and then click on my graphic then going to scale it to round about a good size also going to rotate it it's just a matter of playing around with the graphic and putting it in a spot you think looks quite nice
You may notice that my watercolour image has gone beyond the red line and what that red line is, is a bleed. A bleed ensures that no unprinted edges occur in the final trim document. It is very difficult to print exactly to the edge of this invitation and to achieve this what we do is we add the image and make sure it's larger than the invitation and the bleed and then when we trim down to the correct size it looks like we printed straight to the edge. You don't have to have a bleed but it looks much more professional if you do. Now we're going to do the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to click on this image and Command C or Control C on a PC. Click away and Command V or Control V. I will then do the same thing with this one and resize it to make sure I get it exactly how I like it. Okay, so my flowers are where I like them. And the last thing I need to do is just play around with the text and make sure it is in a good location. So that's it. I'm really happy with the design and the placement of my flowers and text. So all I need to do now is save it as a high quality PDF. To do that, I come up to File, Save As. Find Adobe PDF, click save. Now this is where you can get lost. But I find the best way to do this is to go to Adobe PDF preset and click on high quality print. Uncheck optimize for fast web view. Then go to Marks and Bleeds and check Trim Marks and also use Document Bleed Settings. Down to Output and Convert to Destination, Preserve Numbers and Include Destination Profiles. Everything in advance looks good. Everything in security looks good, everything in summary looks good, and everything in compression looks good. So I'm happy with that, and I'm going to click on Save PDF. So I've opened up the high resolution PDF, and as you can see here, the crop marks and the bleed are in place. And that's it, a high quality watercolour invitation ready to be printed.